Uh, I wanted to ask uh, how it feels to have so much violence going uh, on around you. I was 16 years old at the time. I was two years in Theresienstadt from 14 and I was on I was alone. And we knew, we knew certain things they when they just were tushed, you know, the, 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 it went from one to the other. Who knew it? I don't know. But we did not know from one day to the next what will happen to us. But the only thing that we knew is that the people, the young people who were strong enough to work, they would use later on for working. So that was our only good luck that I was 16 when I went to Auschwitz from Theresienstadt. So where did you uh, find out that, for example, in Auschwitz, uh, there is a gas, uh, there uh, have been people killed with gas or something like that? When we went into the chambers where they had the, the, um, the, red, the uh, water coming down, people knew, I do not know, it must have gone by mouth that you watch out, whatever comes out, water or gas. And we stood there, the doors were closed. We could not get in or out. And we looked up and we prayed to God that we would get water and it came, the water came. So that was number one, where we really knew what was going on. Uh, did you speak German with your children? And if not, why? This is a very good question. My children do not speak a, a German. Why? Because I did not like Germany anymore. I did not like the language anymore. I did not want to know anything about Germany my whole life because they killed all my relatives. I lost, I lost uncle and aunt and three children. I lost another uncle and aunt with two daughters. My whole family, the only ones that we were alive was my brother Manfred, who went to Australia in 1939, and my parents who came here because my father stayed in Theresienstadt because he was, he was um, in the army, in the German army in the First World War, and he lost an eye for, for, for Germany. So they left him in Theresienstadt and did not send him to Auschwitz. And my mother worked in a factory there. It was called Glimmer. They had to do something to work something and make something for uh, airplanes. So that's why they stayed there and they survived there. And they were liberated by the Russians. And from there, they were sent back home to Frankfurt. Have you ever thought you lost your family completely so they all died? Yes. When I went to Sweden, I had no idea if anybody was alive. The only one I was hoping was my brother Manfred, who was six years older than I. And he went in 1939 after Kristallnacht. You all know what Kristallnacht is, right? Yes. He went in 19, he was in a, in a, a Gartenbauschule in Arlem near, near Hanover. And he was sent to England. And from England, they sent them to Australia. And at that time, Australia was very far away from Germany. But my parents said, go, at least you get out and you stay. And that's what he did. And he, as when he left at 17, he never saw his parents again because his parents died here in America. And he did not come much later. And they were not alive anymore. I think you're wonderful children, you're wonderful young people. And, uh, and I, I appreciate that you take an interest in it and that you should know what went on, but to make sure something like this should never happen again. In, every, in any country, not just Germany, in any country that a dictator can have so much power and do such horrible things. But the world will never learn, I'm afraid. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.